Formula One is the world's biggest motorsport. And when the planet has that many eyeballs on a team, a driver, and the glory, the cheating is also the world's biggest. Billionaires pour money into the sport, making the pressure to win and be the fastest undoubtedly immense. And today, we're gonna learn about the extraordinary depths that teams went just to get an edge. Formula One's most cheatingest moments are coming up right after this. My dudes, as the world is starting to open back up, you know what that means. Other things are gonna open up too. And studies show that a woman without a doubt prefers a man that takes care of his junk. That's where Manscaped comes in. With a perfect package 3.0, you get the utmost in male personal grooming. With the centerpiece being the Lawnmower 3.0 that features skin safe technology, 90 minutes of battery life, and a super clutch LED light that goes with the other gear like Crop Preserver Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner. Add the Peak Hygiene subscription for replacement blades sent right to your door at the frequency you desire. So after this video, head on over to manscaped.com forward slash five dash points and get 20% off instantly at checkout. Act now on the perfect package and we'll throw in the shed travel bag and a pair of boxers and free shipping. Hit that link below and open up a whole new world of personal grooming. Manscaped.com Before we get into the cheating, let's get something clear. Just because something is legal at the time it was being done doesn't mean it isn't a circumvention of the rules. If rules were immediately changed outlawing a certain practice, or if an indirect rule canceled that behavior, that's cheating. Of course, there's also cheating. Let's get into it. In 1981, ground effect was all the rage, though Formula One didn't like it. But as you will see, if it makes a car faster, the rule makers can stick it. In an effort to harness more ground effect, Lotus unveiled the 88, a car that had not one, but two chassis. Say what? The rules at the time made an underbody seal essentially illegal, so Colin Chapman decided to place one chassis inside the other, allowing the outer chassis to create the much sought after suction as aerodynamic forces pushed it down. The Lotus 88 was banned quicker than the Redskins changing their name, mostly due to protests of other teams, and it was never used. With a sport so regulated, it's not so surprising that even the tiniest oversights will result in an advantage. Take tires, for example, as they are to be a certain size and a certain width, but in 2003, teams that used Michelin rubber had an edge. Even though they specked out before the race as normal, throughout the course of the day, the Michelins would widen like Danica Patrick stalking Ryan Briscoe. The wider tires would afford for more grip. Rival Bridgestone figured this out and blew the whistle on their competitors, causing them to revise their composition before the Italian Grand Prix that year. Of course, Michelin has been involved in other Formula One mishaps. Though his son Max is more known for calling other racers vaginas and pressers, except that he was being a pussy. Jos Verstappen got caught for cheating in 1994. After long speculation that his Benetton team was using traction control software, which was never actually confirmed, the team did get caught cheating when a pit stop fire occurred on Verstappen's car during the German Grand Prix. After an investigation to determine why the fuel nozzle didn't fit properly, it was discovered that a foreign body obstructed the opening and that the fire prevention filter had been removed. This illegal modification allowed fuel to come in 12.5% faster and also resulted in Verstappen and four crew members getting burnt like Chris Conte in one-on-one -on -one coverage. A lot of variables weigh down a car, the components, the driver, and even the fuel. So in the 80s, Honda and Shell sought to develop the lightest fuel on earth, a concoction that was nearly pure toluene. That's great, but toluene can be lethal if inhaled in large doses. They were so proud of their lightweight cocktail that Shell and Honda even published a paper on it. Too bad in 1993, it was mandated that fuel be made more like gasoline, ending this particular type of shenanigan. And thank God, because who wants to read an entire paper on fuel? Remember when Williams was good? Maybe it was because they used to cheat. 
1982, Nelson Piquet and Kiki Rosberg finished second and third in the Brazilian Grand Prix. Too bad they were using a water tank, which they said was intended for brake cooling, but would empty throughout the race and make the car lighter. After the race, they would refill it to bring the car back to the legal weight. Once this tank was discovered, PK and Rosberg were DQ'd. However, McLaren was bumped up to number two, even though they were cheating in the exact same way. Damn, son. One of the greatest rivalries of the late 80s and early 90s, Elaine Prost and Ayrton Senna knew how to use the system to their advantage. In 1989 at Suzaka, Prost, who needed Senna to not finish in order to be champion, ran into him. However, Senna would recover, but since he used the escape road to rejoin the race, he was disqualified, and Prost won the championship. One year later, at the exact same track, the turntables were flipped, with Senna needing Prost not to finish in order to be champion. Immediately after the race started, Senna ran into Prost in the first corner, knocking him out of the race and clinching the championship. The incident reeked with intent. After his retirement, Prost and Senna would be good friends until Senna's tragic death in 1994. Get used to hearing about Michael Schumacher. In 2006, he was trailing a very fast Fernando Alonso by 15 points in the standing. So rather than overtake him by winning, Schumacher decided to stop him. Literally. At the Monaco GP, where qualifying was key to the championship, Schumacher intentionally stopped his car in the La Rascasse corner slowing up the field, including Alonso, and messing up his qualifying time. Schumacher explained his actions by saying he tried to back up and stalled. Video evidence was to the contrary, and the pole was taken away from the German. There's a joke there somewhere. Alonso still won the championship that year, his second in a row. We've already mentioned ground effect, but in 1978, Brabham took it to the extreme like Vanilla Ice. Designer Gordon Murray added a fan to provide suction to his BT-46B, which sucked the air out from underneath the car like how the Cleveland Browns sucked the life out of their supporters. The fan was said to be intended for engine cooling. At the Swedish Grand Prix, Brabham told their drivers to take it easy during qualifying, and then later, F1 legend Nicky Lauda drove the BT-46B to victory. However, other teams weren't fans. Rather than fight over its legality, Brabham decided to retire the car, basically admitting that they cheated. They say in F1, your teammate is your biggest adversary. Sometimes though, it's your own freaking team. In 2002, back when Ferrari wasn't a trash fire, Rubens Barrichello was on his way to winning the Austrian Grand Prix until his team instructed him to let paddock mate Michael Schumacher pass him and take the checkered so that they could get the maximum amount of points. I guess he was a real team player because he did it and then Schumacher took the podium to an awkward chorus of boos from the fans. Ferrari would be fined $1 million for the incident. Subsequently, race orders like the one in question that affected race outcomes were banned. Ah, it took a while for Lewis Hamilton to get here, didn't it? Speaking of orders that affect outcome of races, in 2009 at the Australian GP, Hamilton got caught in a web of, you know. Harno truly went off the track while there was a caution, so Hamilton passed him to take third. But then he realized what he did, radioed in, and asked if he should let Truly regain his position. They rogered the move, and Hamilton avoided the in-race penalty. However, after the race, Hamilton told investigators that he didn't receive orders to let Truly pass, which was both a lie and illegal. After a little digging, they found out that Hamilton was, of course, lying like a politician, and he was DQ'd. McLaren also lost their constructor points for the race. Cheating that is clever, even though it's cheating, ranks high in my opinion. 
Like in the mid 2000s when Renault disliked the amount that their cars were moving vertically and they put a spring loaded counterweight in the nose. This was at the height of their success as the aforementioned Fernando Alonso won two championships back then, so it must have been effective. FIA, which stands for Ferrari International Assistance, banned the use of the counterweight systems under a catch-all rule which outlawed movable aerodynamic devices. Other teams had started to use the floating counterweights too, so the practice was banned altogether. This happened in Formula E and in a virtual race, but it's so damn hilarious, I have to include it. Just this year, German professional racer Daniel Apt finished third in a simulated Formula E racing event. Pretty good for the up and coming 27 year old racer for Audi. Only problem was during the contest, his face was obstructed on Zoom and he didn't do any of the post-race interviews. Something was fishy. Well, after organizers cross-referenced his IP address, it was found that it it was actually professional sim racer Lorenzo Hersing behind the wheel. Legit, this is like all the kids at home googling the answers to their online tests. Apt was forced to apologize, donate 10k euros to charity, and then was ultimately sacked by Audi. All that and his cheating stand-in only finished third. This one comes as a suggestion to me by fellow YouTuber David Land. Please check out his channel from the link below. So Michael Schumacher has a history of trading paint with other drivers, but this incident and most notably the punishment took it too far. In 1997 at the European GP, Schumacher was leading for the championship against rival Jacques Villeneuve. As Villeneuve tried to pass, Schumacher clipped his car and himself was forced to retire and also lost the championship with that one mistake. After an investigation, Schumacher was deemed to be very much at fault and was disqualified from the entire World Drivers' Championship, the only driver ever to get his results invalidated for an entire season. I guess it was pretty obvious what he did. Did you come to this video exclusively for Crashgate? F1's most notorious scandal involved the son of a legend, an intentional spin-out, and of course, massive cheating. It's the 2008 Singapore Grand Prix. Struggling Renault with an equally struggling Fernando Alonso needs a win really badly. At lap 12, Alonso pitted for fuel and tires. How fortunate that his teammate Nelson PK Jr. crashed in a complicated corner, forcing the safety car out. Alonso got out of the pit and then handily marched to victory as the rest of the field needed to come in. And he already had. All good, right? A year later, it was uncovered that PK was instructed to crash. In fact, they had a code set up to tell him when and where to do it. The ban hammer was brought out for several Renault crew members. PK did not race in F1 in the next season or since. He turned around and sued Renault, and other than their engines, they have been a trash fire since. And now, for the most cheating moment in F1 history. The largest fine ever in F1 was for something only Bill Belichick could be proud of. In 2007, McLaren wanted to know what one of their biggest competitors, Ferrari, was up to. So they got a chief mechanic at Ferrari to hand over a huge amount of technical information on their cars along with financial data and other team secrets. And they would have gotten away with it if it weren't for their own stupidity. McLaren decided to digitize the info and instead of being able to afford that equipment back then, an employee sent his wife to a copy shop. The clerk, who happened to be a huge Ferrari fan, googled the wife's name and put two and two together, finding a link to McLaren. As a result, McLaren received a $100 million fine and then later lost Lewis Hamilton to Mercedes. That hurts. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do not forget to check out this sponsor, Manscaped, from the link below. I'm Five Points Vids, and you made it to my next video.